What is up, everybody? Welcome to the FanDuel Hurry Up. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Jim Sonis of Number Fire. We've talked about season-long fantasy football all week to this point. Let's move over to some DFS and talk about some stacks. Jim, how's everything going today? It is great, Frank. Got a couple of pretty intriguing games on this Week 11 slate. There are several games with a total above 50. We have Deshaun Watson versus Lamar Jackson. Doesn't get a whole lot better than that. So I am pumped for this weekend. How are you? I'm excited as well. I know a lot of people are looking forward to that Texans and Ravens game. We'll get to that a little bit later on, but let's start with your first stack here in Week 11, and that is Josh Jacobs and the Raiders defense hosting the Cincinnati Bengals. The Raiders are big favorites in this one, and obviously good matchup for Jacobs, and normally we don't talk about the Raiders defense, but I think with Ryan Finley at the helm, now's the time to do so. Yeah, we talked about the Raiders defense, but not in a flattering way ever because they're terrible. They're an awful defense. But when you are at home as a 10 point favorite against a fifth round pick who is quite old, I think it sets up pretty well for this Oakland Raiders defense. And they are priced appropriately. They are $5,000. So you're not getting them or Jacobs at a discount because Jacobs is 8,000. But it sets up very well here to be a run heavy script for Oakland. And we know what they're going to do when they're ahead. Let's give Josh Jacobs a ball. In their five wins this year, Jacobs has averaged 22 carries per game. That's awesome. That's a great floor to have. But he's also been getting additional ceiling here because he's been scoring touchdowns and also because he's getting more work in the passing game. Jacobs had five targets last week despite a win against the Chargers. And those five targets are the most that he has had all season long. And that passing game work has been increasing as the year has gone along. So I don't think that was a fluke. I think we should expect Josh Jacobs to continue to get work in the passing game. I think from a cash game perspective, Jacobs is a bit too close to guys like Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey for me from a salary perspective. But for tournaments at $8,000, it's really hard to deny this guy's upside. Josh Jacobs has, has looked really good in the field. The offensive line has been playing much better than I expect them to play too. At home, big favorites. So it's very costly to pair Josh Jacobs with his Raiders defense. And yes, the defense is terrible, but I think in this script, it just sets up well for those two to both go off simultaneously. So you're going to have to fork over a lot, try to find some value plays as a wide receiver, but I still think it makes sense here despite those two issues. The salaries are high for both Josh Jacobs and the Oakland Raiders defense this week, but big favorites at home. It's a good matchup for both of these plays as well. Let's hope that that pass game usage continues to hold out for Josh Jacobs. Let's move on over to the Carolina Panthers and Kyle Allen. So Christian McCaffrey is a stack that you like this week, Jim. Last week, we saw the Falcons' defense show out against the New Orleans Saints. Does that worry you at all, or do you think we get back to that Falcons' defense from before the bye week? Yeah, I think that because we still have all the injuries for the Falcons, that kind of led to their destruction before their bye week. I would still expect them to struggle, and that Saints-Falcons rivalry is like pretty heavily underrated. Like Those two teams are not super fond of each other, the fan bases either. So I think we, can, we don't want to throw it out but I'm willing to overlook it partially and still be into the Panthers here. And honestly, you can stack Kyle Allen with DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, Greg Olson. All those guys are very in play. And I think that using three Panthers here is so viable and so easy to do that I would not talk you out of anybody, but it's so hard for me to pass up Christian McCaffrey in this spot. I was a little bit worried because McCaffrey's snap rate had been going down. His passing game usage was on the decline, but last week, both those things ticked back up. He had seven targets against the Packers and he also played one 100% of the snaps once again. So McCaffrey, you know, I think that maybe you could have been concerned because he was on the injury report, but those concerns were alleviated last week against Green Bay. So it's full speed ahead once again for Christian McCaffrey. And again, I think that it's hard to ever turn him down, even at 10-5. I think he just makes too much sense there. And Allen is only $7,200. And when you're at home, Facing Atlanta, I think that's pretty intriguing. We've seen Kyle Allen throw deep a bit more the past four or so games, maybe getting more comfortable in this offense, opening things up a bit more. And I, I still have my concerns about Kyle Allen long term. But I think when he is at home, throwing it deep a bit more and facing this Atlanta defense, we can feel pretty good about him, especially when he's down at $7,200, helping offset the cost around Christian McCaffrey a bit more. So I think that, again, you can pair Kyle Allen with – Christian McCaffrey and one of the wide receivers or Greg Olson. That's totally okay. But I think my baseline stack for this weekend will be Kyle Allen with Christian McCaffrey because the upside there is very good. And the floor in those two guys is also good at home against Atlanta. 
Jim is throwing out last week's performance from the Falcons' defense. They have that rivalry set up with the Saints as well, so we knew that they were going to play them tough here. But the secondary has struggled all year, so Kyle Allen is in a good spot, and Christian McCaffrey is just doing historic things. So if you need a safe stack for this weekend, Kyle Allen and Christian McCaffrey is one of the best ones heading into Week 11. To quote the Joker here, Jim, here we go. That's a, a gif out there for my millennials as well. We've got the Houston Texans going up against the Baltimore Ravens, one of the most fun matchups that we're going to see all season long. And you are all over Deshaun Watson to DeAndre Hopkins as one of the stacks here. Does the fact that this Ravens defense, and specifically their secondary, playing better recently, does that worry you at all when it comes to this stack? It would worry me for a lot of teams, but the Texans are not a lot of teams. They've been playing really well this entire year, even in tough matchups. This, this offense has come through pretty often. They are kind of inconsistent, but if you're going to give me a little bit of potential negative game script for Deshaun Watson, I'm not going to say no ever. He is way too good to ever be shut down by an opposing defense. You know, Baltimore, I agree. They played much better. They got healthier in the secondary, getting Marcus Peters there. It's helping them get some big splash plays. But it's Deshaun Watson, man. He's been really good with Laramie Tunsil. It seems like he should be back this week after missing their first game before the bye. So I think that Deshaun Watson is going to be most likely my favorite quarterback on the board this week. And you could have questions about DeAndre Hopkins with Will Fuller primed to come back from his injury. And I think those are valid. And it could lower DeAndre Hopkins from where he was. But Hopkins also didn't get a major price hike, even with with Fuller being out. He's still at eighty three hundred dollars. So I don't think that's too high. If we look at the time before Will Fuller got hurt, Hopkins still had twenty nine percent of the team's targets in that time. And he had twenty six percent of the deep targets. That is still a really good role even though he had a lot of disappointing games in that time as well. He still had a very high floor. He had access to a high ceiling too. So I still think that even with Will Fuller coming back, DeAndre Hopkins makes a lot of sense. Now I'll go Will Fuller too, because Fuller is awesome. And I would love to have him in this matchup here. So if Fuller is back and ready to roll, he will be in my lineups. But I think that DeAndre Hopkins would still be our preferred way to get access to this team. I always want Deshaun Watson when he is in a spot where he has to throw, maybe run a little bit more as well. And I think that could be the case this weekend. So I think that it's going to be hard to pass up Deshaun Watson. I think that when I am stacking him, my preferred piece will be with DeAndre Hopkins. We've got a big total in that matchup between the Houston Texans and the Baltimore Ravens. Should be a really fun one. Some back and forth. Very competitive game as well. Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins, one of the best stacks heading into Week 11. We've already talked about the Houston Texans. Let's jump on over to the other side. Lamar Jackson, also known as the human cheat code. You saw that run last week. Very Michael Vick-esque. You might argue it was better than Michael Vick. Spin move. Two defenders collide into each other. You like stacking Lamar Jackson with Mark Andrews coming off a two-touchdown game. Jim, no love for Hollywood Brown? I'm saving him for tomorrow when we discuss the value plays because he's $5,600. So there was some ulterior motivation here. But I think that Hollywood Brown and Mark Andrews are the clear two stacking candidates with Lamar Jackson. And I was actually at that game that where Michael Vick had the overtime touchdown against the Vikings. That Lamar Jackson run last week was better than that run. And that's saying a lot because Michael Vick was pretty fun. But Lamar Jackson, even more fun. And that rushing is giving him such a high floor and a high ceiling that I think you could easily make a pitch that, Desha that Lamar Jackson's salary should be like $9,500. So getting him at $8,800, I think, is kind of actually a bargain, which is weird for a quarterback, a position where we do want to spend in the $7,000 as possible. But with Lamar Jackson floor and ceiling combination, it makes total sense to me to pay that. I probably don't have to talk you into Lamar Jackson, but Mark Andrews, maybe I do. So let's talk about him here because... In the two games since Marquise Brown came back from his injury, Andrews still has 25% of the team's targets in that time. He has five deep balls in those two games. He had two against New England, three against Cincinnati. And with how good Lamar Jackson has been this year, there's a lot of value in those throws down the field. He is $6,900, and that is a pretty big salary to pay for a tight end. But again, you're getting the guy who has been the number one pass catcher in this offense pretty much the entire year. He has yardage upside and touchdown upside. So I think that Mark Andrews, even at a high salary, does make a lot of sense. I will have plenty of Hollywood Brown too, and you can run Lamar Jackson without a stacking partner because he can go off all by himself as he showed against Cincinnati. But I think Mark Andrews does make a lot of sense. You don't have to use another tight end, which is always a plus as well. So I'm going to go at this stack a lot of ways. Again, Lamar Jackson by himself, with Hollywood Brown, or with Mark Andrews. But I do think that Mark Andrews will be my preferred outlet here, and we'll get some love for Hollywood on tomorrow's show as well.
I apologize, Jim, for jumping the gun on Hollywood Brown. I didn't know he was going to be on tomorrow's show. But we will get to Hollywood. Don't you worry about that. For now, the stack that Jim likes the most, Lamar Jackson throwing to Mark Andrews. Let's move on over to another running back and defense stack here, Jim. And it's Devin Singletary and the Buffalo Bills defense. Singletary played at least 66% of the snaps in three straight games. Although he did somewhat let us down last week, Jim. Are you sure you want to do this? The Miami Dolphins are one of the hottest teams in the league right now, Jim. Yeah, allegedly they are. Uh, but they've also, you know, played against Brian Hoyer and then Sam Darnold. And Darnold actually didn't play that terribly in the game. He had a, a terrible pick, but he still overall had a pretty efficient day. So I'm still very okay going at this Miami defense. And I think that Devin Singletary off the disappointment makes a lot of sense because, yeah, he did let us down last week. But if you look at week nine combined with week 10, in those two games, Singletary still has 11 of 21 early down running back carries for this offense. So he's getting more work from Frank Gore or more work than Frank Gore there. And we're seeing Devin Singletary get a lot of work in the passing game. He has 18% of the team's targets over the past two games. So you're giving me targets and you're giving me a pretty good amount of early down work for a team that I think should score a lot of points on the road against Miami. He is $6,500 and Devin Singletary is probably going to come in a little bit less popular than he was given that he had this appointment, but I think he still makes a lot of sense. He did not see a role change last week. He still played the same role that he played the week before. He just saw a different game script this time around. He had 20 carries in that game, uh, where they face Washington. I would expect him to have a pretty good number here once again here. The Bills defense is spendy at $5,000, and they are on the road, which is a negative, and the Dolphins have been playing well, but we know that Ryan Fitzpatrick can occasionally turn into a pumpkin, throw some picks, and I'm very okay with that. So Singletary at $6,500 helps offset partially the cost tied to the Bills defense, and I think that makes a lot of sense. So I'm going right back to Devin Singletary this week. The salary came down $200, although the role did not change and the matchup got a whole lot better so Devin Singletary I think it makes sense to look for a bounce back here and pair him with that Bills defense personally it feels like Jim Sonis is underrating the Miami Dolphins here just a little bit now nah, I'm just kidding we're gonna go with Devin <laughs> Singletary and the Buffalo Bills I never thought that we would see the end of Frank Gore but just 27 rushing yards over his last two games doesn't look like the player he was earlier on in the season they're starting to give more work to Devin Singletary he's in a really really good spot this week going up against the Miami Dolphins. Our final stack that we want to talk about heading into Week 11, Jim, that is Dak Prescott to Amari Cooper. Both of these players looking for big contracts, and Dak's been playing like it. Actually, they've both been playing like it so far this season. Do you worry about Darius Slay at all in the spot going up against the Detroit Lions? Um, Amari Cooper's too good. Uh, it's really hard for me to worry about matchups with this guy because he's been so good this year. And if you are worried, just go to Michael Gallup. He's had a great role too. So this, this Cowboys team is one of the more fun teams for fantasy right now, which is which is enjoyable. I enjoy watching them. I'm glad they're finally back on the main slate for the first time in like six months. It's been a long time, but we will happily go at Dak Prescott here. I would really like for Matthew Stafford to play this game for the Lions because that would give this game a lot of shootout appeal if it does happen. But even if he doesn't, I think that the Cowboys offense passing has been efficient enough where we can still go at them even if Stafford does not play. Dak has had at least 20 FanDuel points in all but two games so far this year. He has had 25 or more FanDuel points four separate times, so a really good floor and an awesome ceiling as well. As far as Amari Cooper goes, he's had a, a tremendous role so far this year. If we look at the games since Randall Cobb came back from injury, Cooper has 25% of the overall targets in those games, and he has 45% of the deep targets. They're on the road, and generally Dallas does not play as well on the road as they do at home, but this game is indoors, which I think helps mitigate that at least a little bit. Cooper is $8,100, and I think that with his usage and his talent, that's still totally okay. He has 100 or more receiving yards four separate times this year, had 88 yards in another, a couple of two touchdown days, so... I want to pair these two guys together. It's been far too long since we've had the Cowboys on the main slate. Zeke's in a good spot, too. I know the efficiency has not been there this year, but he's, the usage has been. And the Lions have really struggled to stop the rush. So I think it's kind of fire every Cowboy you possibly can into those lineups. They're in a great spot here. Again, I really hope Matthew Stafford can play. If he does, this game has the potential to shoot out. And Dak and Amari would be the two biggest benefactors if that does happen. Every cowboy, you say, huh, Jim? I'm going to throw you a little bit of a curveball. I know we're talking football, but any interest in Randall Cobb asking for a friend? 
He had five deep targets last week. I think he had like five deep targets the entire year prior to that. So he would not be my first choice here. I'd prefer Michael Gallup, who is awesome, and Amari Cooper over him. But Randall Cobb's in play, too. I don't know if I'd go there for DFS because he might not have the same upside as those guys. But for season long, uh, Randall Cobb's actually had a pretty good role. So you could do a lot worse than Randall Cobb, especially when he's tied to a quarterback playing as well as Dak Prescott right now. All right, Jim, we'll be sure to tell my friend about your analysis of Randall Cobb. But we're firing up all Cowboys here, specifically Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper. We're not worried about Darius Slay. They're playing indoors. The production has been awesome for both of these guys. Make sure you fire up Dak Prescott and Amari Cooper heading into Week 11. For Jim Sonis, I am Frank Stanfield. Thank you so much for watching, and good luck in Week 11.